I'm going to have a little bit of a go at you. Um, you are someone who's probably clicking on this video because you want to study maths at Oxford or Cambridge or maybe something similar, and you've got to do an admissions test. Uh, so you're probably between year 12 and year 13, just finishing year 12, about to have your summer holidays. You've got the MAT or the TMUA or also the interviews as well coming down the line as soon as you get back to school in September. You want to know what to do this summer. Good question. I'm going to break it down. Step one, learn all of A-level maths. Like if you, if you want to get into Oxford or Cambridge, especially for maths, here's the magic secret. You've got to be good at maths. Like you just have to be very, very good at maths. Step one, teach yourself the remainder of A-level maths. So some schools do all of maths in first year, all of further maths in second year. Um, some schools do a bit half and half in first year, half and half in second year. Whatever you haven't done, teach yourself. So I would prioritize the pure maths side of things. So teach yourself the remainder of single maths pure and the remainder of all the further pure stuff as well, the stuff that you do in the further maths. And why not also teach yourself some of the probability and statistics stuff? You should enjoy it and you should, you know, it should be easy to you, right? If it's stuff that you're struggling with, to be honest, maybe Oxbridge is not for you. If it's something where actually you can kind of teach yourself, go for it, that's fine. You might be asking, oh, well, how do I teach myself? Get the textbook, right? Just either buy the textbooks or you can actually find the Edexcel ones online for free. I mean, I found it on a Google Drive. I just literally type it into Google. Um, there'll be some link. I think I found it off Reddit or something. Um, but you can get a PDF with all, uh, sorry, a Google Drive with the PDFs of all the textbooks in. If you don't do Edexcel, oh well, just do the Edexcel. Teach yourself the Edexcel course. It's the same thing. Um, just teach yourself all of A level maths. Like, it does sound like bizarre to say that, right? In the space of summer, I, I don't even mean in summer, I mean in like the first week or two. So in the first week or two, teach yourself the whole of A-level maths, whatever you've got left to learn. Now, the reason I say that is, A, it's a really good filtration process. If you cannot do that in two weeks, if you're struggling to do that, right, and, and this will require several hours a day, so it's like a full-time job. Spend seven, eight, nine hours a day doing this. And this will be a test for yourself. Firstly, is Oxbridge maths for me? If you aren't willing to do nine hours a day for just a week or two on A-level maths, how on earth do you expect to do an Oxbridge degree where you're going to be doing maths which is a hundred times harder and doing it probably for double the amount of time you're going to be spending, you know, for a whole year, it's going to be a full-time job plus another 20 hours of doing mathematics. If you cannot do this for two weeks, spending maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever hours a day learning maths, how on earth do you expect to get into Oxbridge? So do that. It's a really good way to test if that's for you. Also, it's going to make your year 13 life a hell of a lot easier. If you're doing maths, further maths, maybe a subject or two other subjects, you can then spend the rest of the academic year focusing on those other two subjects. Now, what do you do once you've done those first week or two teaching yourself A-level maths? Well, also, by the end of those two weeks, you want to be doing past paper of A-level and making sure you can answer each and every question. So I'd say maybe in that 14-day span, spend the first 12 days teaching yourself maths further maths, whatever's left. So do the maths yourself. Right? So if you've got, let's say, uh, you know, 12 days and you've got 24 chapters, that's two chapters a day, right? Do two chapters a day. Obviously that will kind of vary. Some chapters are longer, whatever, but just, just do it. Like stop making excuses and just do it, right? Once you've done that, you now have got a really good core understanding. Now, depending if you're doing on MAT or TMUA, you know, the advice I give will be ever so slightly different, but broadly speaking, it's the same. Um, I would firstly say have a look at some of the earlier past papers. Now, bear in mind, earlier past papers for any admissions test are going to be easier. You look at MAT, TMUA, STEP, even look at, you know, physics entrance papers or whatever, history entrance papers. They'll, they'll be easier um, earlier on just because of how papers have to get harder as students get smarter and there's more resources available to them. But have a go at them. And do not worry about timing. Timing does not matter until you get to the end of summer. Do not do the papers under timed conditions. For the time being, just have a look at the questions. If it takes you 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, more than a day even, if you can't solve it there and then, don't look at the answers. I cannot emphasize that enough. Do not just look at the answers. Because what you really need to force yourself to get used to, and this will take time, so you've got to get, like, get, get into a good habits early, 
is not looking at the solution because the one thing that's going to frustrate you is the fact that you will not get the answer straight away. If you're good at A-level math, you're going to get the answers like that instantaneously. You're going to have a look at a problem, get the answer instantaneously. Now, with, um, yeah, with this, you're going to not, there'll be questions where you just don't know how to solve it, or maybe you're not sure. Maybe, in fact, you do think you've known, you know how to solve it. But even then, I'll, I'll say refrain from looking at the answer, because likelihood is, with some of these harder problems, you might think you know how to solve it, but maybe you haven't. So force yourself to check your working. Perhaps think, is there another way I can approach the problem and see if you get to the same answer? And then, only then, after you've spent a few days either trying the problem, various things, then have a look at the solution. Because you're going to have a much better appreciation of that solution if you give it some time to really marinate. Now, uh, only look at a few older past papers, uh, at least to begin with, just to, to give yourself a sense of the idea. And this, again, is another test for you as to whether you really want to study this subject, right? It's still early days, still the start of summer. You can still uh, change things, right? Um, all, all the while, whilst you're doing this, um, you want to also be thinking about your personal statement. So I've mentioned this a hundred times before. I'm going to mention it again now. Oxbridge don't care about your personal statement. You know, you could literally say, I like maths and I like football and then talk the rest of your personal statement about football and they, they wouldn't care. The, the next thing that they care at least about is your exam grades, your predicted grades. So your A levels or if you have AS levels or things like this. Uh, but the 99% of your application is your admissions tests and your interviews. So for maths at Oxford, it's the MAT and the interviews. For Cambridge, the interviews and STEP. Uh, if you apply for maths and computer science or computer science or economics, or if you apply to maths elsewhere, um, they'll obviously maybe use a TMUA. Um, and, but yeah, if, it's, if they have interviews, the admissions tests and the interviews, those are the main things. Um, but some of the non-Oxford unis do care about your personal statements. So... Um, obviously in your personal statement, things you want to write about, maybe try and find if there are any summer lectures near where you are. So if you live in London or you have access to nearby universities, just send them an email. Hey, do you have any uh, courses or lectures? They might have a website. Just do some research, read some math books, watch some math videos. Um, that's something you can talk about. My personal statement, I talked about um, watching lots of black pen, red pen math videos and getting really excited by that. So do what works for you. And uh, yeah, f find mathematics that you find interesting that you can talk about in your personal statement. That's something you want to be just working on in the background. So have some bullet points uh, and get that started over summer. And uh, by the end of summer holidays, you want to have a good, really good draft to kind of maybe check with your teacher or whatever. Um, anyway, uh, that, that's not really that important if, you're, if your goal is Oxbridge. Your goal is Oxbridge. You've got to be focusing on the admissions tests and the interviews. OK, so you've learned A-level maths. You've looked at a few past papers. Then what? You've maybe got three, four weeks of summer left. You want to make the most of it. So here's where I would say it's best to really focus on various skills. So you've looked at a few past papers. What common themes have you seen? What common types of questions have you seen? So, for example, let me pick on logarithms. So that's a topic that could come up in the MAT or TMUA. So now you've seen, obviously, logarithms in the A-level course. Absolutely master that. You get 100% consistently on A-level logarithm questions. And now you've also seen some MAT past paper or TMUA past paper logarithm questions from the few that you've looked at. Make a note. What's the differences? What are they... What certain skills or tricks or things come up in these admissions tests that don't come up in A-levels? Write those down. From what you've seen, what are the tricks? Why do those tricks work? When can we use those tricks? All these sorts of things are things you want to be thinking about and really analyse yourself because it's almost as if you're doing like a... You're kind of doing the prep work. Like, you know, when you're making a, a, a meal... Uh, you have to chop up some vegetables and stuff. But that, that process in itself, you might not use those vegetables till later on in the dish, but you get it done early on. Get it out of the way. Same thing here, kind of really analysing, well, why does this rule work? The last thing you want to do is get to the MAT and then think, have to think about, oh, why can I use this rule? Can I use this rule here? If you just know that, oh, I can only use this rule if X is between 6 and 7, okay, there's no rule. Like, for example, okay, the geometric sum for me to infinity, you can only use that. Uh, if R is between negative 1 and 1. Um, if you didn't know that and you're trying to faff about in the exam trying to work that out, it's a waste of time. So make sure all these tricks um, you kind of that you've discovered from those exams, you make a note of. And I'd also encourage you then to maybe redo, redo those problems 
under time conditions. So now also thinking about those time conditions. Um, other resources, so obviously you want to be doing MAT, TMUA problems. Um, I'd say the UKMT Senior Math Challenge can be quite good for getting used to multiple choice problems and uh, some of the techniques for uh, excluding uh, incorrect topics. Obviously, there's some things in the SMC, sorry, some things in the admissions test which wouldn't really be assessed in the SMC, and, and that's fine, uh, but it's still a good resource. I'd also say STEP is a really good resource. Lots of people just stay away from STEP because A, it's hard, and B, it's long-form questions, not multiple choice. But the reason I'd highly encourage doing step problems is because you're going to learn a bunch of tricks along the way. So you look at a step problem and you do a step problem and maybe you can see, ah, OK, there's this cool trick that I learned here. Uh, because step problems most of the time have some kind of moral of the story. Um, you know, when you do a step problem, there's a reason that they've given you part A and part B. Or maybe the whole problem ties together to give you the part D or whatever. And there's a really beautiful result you can get from that. And sometimes knowing that result can be really useful for multiple choice problems. Anyway, summer holidays, you can relax, you can chill. It really depends on how badly do you want Oxbridge. Because I can promise you from the students that I teach, they are working hard. There are students that I don't teach, they are working hard. They are going to be making the absolute most of this summer. If you want Oxbridge, or if you're not sure, give it a go. If it isn't for you, that's fine. Go somewhere else. If it is for you, the last thing you want to do is get to September and know that you're six weeks, eight weeks behind the competition. Best of luck.